Ladies and gentlemen, Rockabilly Rumble is proud to present Soul Cal Rocket Dynamics. Take it away, boys. Two, three, four. I don't wanna sit around and wonder. Asunder. It seems I've let it go on far too long. Why you? I'm Johnny Hatton from the Brian Setzer Orchestra, and we're coming to you from the Handlebar Barbershop and Apothecary in beautiful downtown Thousand Oaks, California. And we're here today with SoCal Rocket Dynamics. That's a great name. I love that name, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Um, anybody live near Rocket Dine? Because I did for a while <laughs> up on too. Roscoe. Yeah. You did? And, and you hear this sound. Let's all make it together. <laughs> It was, it would, that would happen. So let's introduce everybody. And uh, Bobby, you're the bass player. Tell, tell us a little bit about how you got influenced to play the bass and why. And can you, is there any way you can break this habit somehow? Because <laughs> I need more work. <laughs> um, I mean, uh, I guess it's, it starts with like your parents' music. And then, uh, of course, like the first rockabilly I knew from my generation was, uh, you know, Stray Cats, Brian Setzer. And then right around the 90s, I was playing in a bunch of punk bands. I was into like the, the, the Fat Records and Epitaph style bands, but there was also Brian Sitzer Orchestra came out. Um, saw them down in Orange County, which you know a lot about. Oh, yes. And then uh, <laughs> I knew then, like, I, I am getting an upright bass. Oh, I'm good for getting you. one, and I'm going to figure it out. And of course, like, you know how many blisters and, and uh, oh, yeah. 
how much yeah. bleeding is involved in getting okay at that, but it was worth it. You so. bleed for your craft on sure, that sure. yeah. Matt, you're our rhythm guitarist. Tell us about your we, history and we, your inspiration. <laughs> only guitarist. Only guitarist. <laughs> only guitarist. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, I was uh, I was given the first Monkeys album when I was six years old. And hey, hey, where's the book? Yes, and at that point I, I knew what I wanted to do, and I got the uh, uh, hard story. Dude. It That's is, good. I know. Yeah, and uh, yeah, I got a harmony acoustic from one of my cousins when I was about seven. Didn't really learn to play until I was more like thirteen. You can't play those anyway. No, it's not really. It's about that. Huh? I don't know how Chris <laughs> Isaac does it, but uh, yeah, and then played in um, new wave bands and uh, cover bands during the eighties and. Um, Bobby and I met years later, and just when his band needed a guitar player, the power pop thing I was playing in ended, like, yeah. and the stars all aligned, and uh, off we went. Nice. And Mark, tell us about your musical beginnings. Musical beginnings has always been rock and roll, Rolling Stones and stuff, but all, Built for Speed is really what, oh. you know, it was in the house early on, and. I listen to it nonstop. So. And you're playing stand-up drums today. Yeah, 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 yeah. Slim Jim's always been kind of a like, uh, you know, in, in there. So yeah, totally. He's a phantom. Yeah. I'm a phantom. <laughs> yeah. 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 Slim Jim phantom. Phantom. And Rich, you're our vocalist. Tell us about your history. Yeah, uh, I started off on drums from a young age. I heard the drums, and that's what I played forever. Um, rock and roll, you know, every, you name it, every kind of drum. Uh, sound and then I met Bobby uh, in LA uh, back in 2005 we put together we were in a band pretty lame band it was a pretty lame band it was, yeah. it was, lame. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, well, it was fun hanging out with you now. yeah, yeah. It, it forged the you know the beginnings of uh, this other band he wrote this rockabilly great rockabilly record and I was like what's this stuff you know and it was amazing and so I started off on drums playing that and we couldn't find a singer and so I just found my friend to do it, and I kind of jumped up front, and I was ready to go. So. There you go. Yeah, he was he was better than all the singers we tried, so we were finally like, well, I guess we're looking for a drummer. <laughs> <laughs> there's, there's a lot of drummers. Yeah, yeah. he's cool. Yeah. So you know what I noticed about you guys? You played acoustic, except for you. Yeah, the amp, but the amp was yeah. real soft because yeah, I mean his bass has two sound posts for you bass players. That cuts the sound way down, cuts feedback. So um, it's twice as good. Yeah. So you needed an amp. You pr if you had, you only had the one sound. Yeah. Post. If it was set up for more of an acoustic instrument, you could have heard me without it. But we we wanted we tested it on our phone the other night, and it was mostly treble. So we we're like, all right, I got to bring my yeah. Hands. Yeah, yeah. Need a little bottom in. Yeah. So, but that that's kind of cool. You can. Uh, I remember we were playing a gig at or Orchid Ranch, and they didn't allow any electronics. So our our band would just I bring an upright bass. They had an op upright piano. And we got the dance floor packed, so it just goes to show you, it doesn't have to be loud to burn. Mm -hmm. And uh, I like that. you guys did great. Thank write, you. We should write um, that song. Yeah. yeah, it doesn't have to yeah. be loud to burn. <laughs> yeah. God, it doesn't have to be loud to burn, it's true. <laughs> and I like the brushes, and everything was just like the old school. Yeah, thanks. Nobody had amps, you know, when it first yeah. started. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, maybe the singer. Uh, so tell me about your worst gig you ever played. <laughs> you the bowling the alley? No, <laughs> nah, this is good. You with the, the, well, oh, they, yeah, that. The yeah. prison porn when they're burning the girl with the light bulb? Japanese prison porn while we're playing. Oh. On the TVs all around. And nobody can pay any attention to us. Even we're, <laughs> even we're watching it in horror, we're like, wow. <laughs> We weren't paying attention to us. Yeah. Yeah. It was kind of a bad gig. That was, a, was, bad, that was a bad gig. <laughs> we, no. It was in New Hall. We'll, yeah, we'll no. say where in It New was Hall. at the VU, no, no offense. Like. Yeah. Which is a great venue. I don't know Just why the video was that less, way that night. Less but Japanese <laughs> women in prison porn yeah. death. I, I worked a gig at the, at the Lighthouse, famous jazz club, and we were playing Rockabilly, and they're showing uh, Betty Davis. Uh, 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 I don't know, bondage and things like that. <laughs> it, was real, it was real tame, but uh, bondage videos while we're playing. So guys, we need to wrap pretty soon, but how long should a pants cuff be? This is four inches. Four inches? Yeah. You know, I'm I, a little short. I like to think that size isn't important. Really? It's <laughs> <laughs> just me. <laughs> Favorite hot rod? Uh, well, okay, so this probably isn't old school enough. I love uh, the Green Hornets uh, 65 Chrysler. It's, um, we got a yes from our <laughs> <It's> an awesome, <laughs> awesome ride. 
66 GTO. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah, we're kind of 64. Uh, I would say like Ford Falcon. Oh, well, that's nice. Yeah, like a Futura or something. Even is cool too. I have a 49 Ford, but I would trade it for a 49 Mercury in a second. Oh. <laughs> yeah. All right, people out there looking to trade? Yeah, yeah. Oh. It's, my, mine's a four door, just so you know. <laughs> <laughs> but I'll trade you. That can be welded shut. <laughs> shut. <laughs> if you know what you're doing, you can make it awesome. Yeah. You can fill in those doors. No, somebody else can. <laughs> I got things to do. <laughs> All right, thanks for Rockabilly Rumble, everybody. Soul Cal Rocket yeah. Dynamics. One, two, one, two, three, four.